Hi everybody. We have received tons of videos from you guys for Dude I Love or Hate My Ride at Home Edition, but I think today's video might be the most unique. This video is dedicated to just one vehicle, a deuce and a half. This is a big military 6x6 truck and uh, Mike, the owner of it, is seriously an expert with his truck. So rather than me try to explain anything, let's turn it over to him and he'll tell you all about it. Hey everybody, this is Mike in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This is my truck. It's a 1971 AMC General Products Division M35A2, two and a half ton cargo truck commonly known as a deuce and a half. It's 22 feet long, nine feet tall at the smokestack, and about 10 feet wide at the mirrors. Weighs uh, 13,500 pounds, and I'll take on a little walk around on it. I'll start with the engine. Have to climb up on the bumper to get it open. Here's the engine. This engine is an LDT 465-1D turbocharged multi-fuel, six cylinder, inline six, uh, 478 cubic inch, puts out about 130 horsepower and about 350 foot-pounds of torque. Go over some things on it. Start with the firewall here. This orange bottle is your ether injection. That's for uh, cold starts. This truck absolutely needs ether to start at any temperature below 40 degrees. It uh, won't do anything without it. Windshield washer bottle there. Oil filters here. Fuel filters here. Got your steering shaft. Runs all the way down through the firewall. To your steering box. Completely manual steering on this truck. Air compressor here. That's for your onboard air tanks. They give you your brake boost for your brakes. Come over to this side. Got your turbocharger there. No intercooler on it. This is a very old turbo design. Got your uh, generator there. Truck works on a uh, 24 volt DC system. Got your horn trumpets there, large air cleaner, and intake. This engine takes 22 quarts of oil, Rotella SAE 30 is what I run in it. Underneath the truck, got the oil pan, got your two and a half ton Rockwell axle there. This tube hangs down, everyone asks about what that is, that's your crankcase vent. Uh, vents right out to the atmosphere, there's no emissions control on this thing. That's your primary fuel filter. Large leaf springs. Axle uh, steering knuckle. Go around to the cab, take a look inside. Starting with the running board, got your extra five gallon jerry can. Got a storage compartment under here. I typically uh, stick my wheel chocks in there when I'm running down the road. This is the cab. <coughs> Got your standard gauges, oil pressure, speedometer, tachometer, water temperature, fuel, electrical generator output, and air pressure. These are your controls. This is your ether switch that I talked about. 
You only want to hit that when the engine's cranking. If you uh, hit that before you crank the engine, you'll get really bad knocking when the uh, ether hits the uh, cylinders. Got your manual throttle here. Now with this, you can uh, set a high idle when you're parked, or you can pull it all the way out. And what that does, if you watch the gas pedal when I pull the throttle handle, it really just pulls the uh, gas pedal down. That's if you're uh, running external equipment like uh, electric tools or want to build up your air tanks or uh, use an air tools. There are external air fixtures that you can hook up air tools to this truck. Uh, windshield wipers are pneumatically powered. They run off your uh, air tanks. They're controlled with this knob here. All this is a variable air valve. The more you spin it out, the more air you get to your wipers. And you see they start moving. Tighten up the valve, they stop. They don't park themselves automatically, so to put them back in the park position, you just grab the lever on the inside and put them to where you want them. Air horn. Got the funky three lever uh, military light switch that befuddles a lot of people the first time they ever see one, but once you figure it out, it's not that bad. Windshield opens up for ventilation. And you can prop this window in the uh, open position by turning that knob there on the uh, windshield arms. So you can ride with it open. Plenty of fresh air in the cab which is important in the summer because this thing gets hot slide in your window and you even got a foot vent all kind of nice fresh air in here uh, it's a five-speed manual the transmission is a Spicer 3053A uh, synchronized uh, all the gears are synchronized except first and uh, reverse you'll notice has a strange shift pattern. Has a dog leg first, reverses up and left, first is low left. Two, three, four, five. And you'll notice three and four, you have to go over the hump, I call it, to get into four and then straight up into five. So it goes like this it's one, two, three, up and over to four, and straight up to five. Two speed manual transfer case. Normally ride around with it in high range. Um, some people like to shift these things while they're moving. I don't find that that's necessary. If you're empty and you're not pulling hard, you can uh, pretty much cruise around with it in high range all the time. You can also shove it down to low for that extra pulling power if you're off-road. Got your fire extinguisher uh, there, very necessary. <laughs> Got a big glove box on this truck. There's my keys. It's nice and deep. Good place to store your Dash 10 operating manual. Most of these trucks you'll see they have a uh, two man bench seat on the passenger side. This truck comes with the uh, sport buckets, I like to call them. Pay a premium for the sport buckets. That's a joke, of course. I only paid $4,500 for this truck about three years ago. Got your rifle racks, so you can put your butt stocks in the cup and secure them over with these hooks. Come along the side. You got your Pioneer rack right here. On there you got your uh, shovel, your axe, and your mattock, your pick, so you can dig in or clear a trail if you have to. Spare tire here. It's held up by that ratchet pole right there. You get your uh, tire iron lug and you spin it down. You can bring the spare down. You got your air tank vents right there. The uh, air tanks Fill with, uh, they get moisture in them when you compress the air and it collects in the bottom. So every time you run the truck, you should drain them out. Tanks look pretty dry today. And you got your tandem, dual tires. 
These are uh, 900-20, so they're nine inches wide on a 20-inch wheel. That's your tailgate. I run these D-rings on here to give it a little extra security so these hooks don't jump out while I'm driving. It happened to me a couple times and I decided I didn't want that happening anymore. There's the bed. It's 8 feet wide, 12 feet long. This truck at some point in its life was fortunate enough to get fiberglass troop seats. Most of these trucks from this era, you'll see they have wood troop seats. These are fiberglass. They fold down. The legs come out. You can fit about uh, 20 people comfortably back here. Probably 30 if you really had to pack them in. And even more if you sat them on the floor. Your rear end. You can also see it's a top loader design, which is unique to the Rockwell. They have this large pinion up here that spins. Basically, that allows you to put a drive shaft on either side. And uh, if you're intended to, you could actually put as many axles on as you wanted, theoretically. Just keep adding drive shafts. The uh, drive ratio in these are 6.72 to 1. So, uh, a lot of torque out of these. Got your 50 gallon fuel tank right here. This is a multi fuel engine. So, even though you typically run diesel in it, you can actually combust uh, just about anything combustible in it. Um, use motor oil, fuel oil, transmission fluid automotive gasoline. The only fuel you really want to stick, uh, stay away from is uh, high octane aviation gasoline or alcohol type fuels. Those fuels are too dry and they'll burn up your injector pump uh, if you run those. Got your battery box here. Got your interstates wired in series to give you 24 volt DC power. Got your slave receptacle right here. In the field, if you need a jump, instead of hooking up to the batteries, you plug your slave wire into this, run it into a corresponding truck, and that hooks right into your 12 volt system. Here's your uh, air hookup in the cab. Like I said, you can. Uh, Hook an airline to this and air up your tires yeah, on the road. You can also hook up some air tools. The tanks aren't very large, so if you use it too much, they'll deplete pretty quickly, but uh, it gives you a something better than nothing. Got your other vent right here. And that's it. Hope you like my deuce and a half. Keep up with the good work, I'll uh, catch you later. Very cool. Mike, liked your deuce and a half? I love your deuce and a half. What a cool truck. I love seeing these military trucks because they're just so utilitarian. Everything on that truck has a specific purpose. It's designed to work. There's no unnecessary systems. That thing is sweet, man. I would love to come down there and take it off road and go for a spin. So guys, that's it for this video. Go below, let Mike know what you think of his deuce and a half, or maybe more accurately, I should say, let him know how much you love his deuce and a half. And uh, then as always, while you're down there, hit like, hit subscribe, and then come right back here to the channel for the latest news, views, and real world reviews. See you.